So really these targeted combinations really emphasize the need for next generation sequencing or molecular profiling. This represents really the first targeted therapies that were approved for a specific mutational type in prostate cancer. And so it really em emphasizes the need to look for these mutations in order to have candidacy, identify candidates for these PARP inhibitor combinations. There's a couple of ways we can do it. We can identify these through germline or genetic testing, which is actually an NCCN recommended criteria for all patients with metastatic prostate cancers to undergo germline or genetic testing. You can also do somatic testing through the tissue biopsies, or you can even use liquid biopsies, CT DNA-based assays to look for these DNA damage repair mutations. So I think you have to really look at the prior history of treatments with these patients. This is really indicated in the first line MCRPC space, although there are ongoing combinations moving them earlier into the metastatic castration-sensitive prostate cancer setting, this is really an MCRPC label. And again, it, it, you can't identify these mutations without looking. And so I think the first key step is at the earliest setting possible of advanced prostate cancer, we either do somatic or liquid-based testing to look for these mutation types. Once they are confirmed, I think you have to stratify based on the type of DDR mutation. If they are BRCA1 and BRCA2, all three combinations are FDA approved. However, if they are non-BRCA1 and 2, such as RAD51, for example, and other non-BRCA1 and 2 mutations, then it really is Talipro2 regimen, telazoparib and enzalutamide that has the broader, looser label for, for applicability in this setting.